Hi all, this is Jan Almighty and welcome to this video. So today, it's been a long while, so I bring you some Capablanca goodness. Uh, where we left the story actually is that uh, Capablanca didn't manage to win the Sabering Cup of 1913, but uh, nevertheless he stayed over there back in Russia and tried to play some few more exhibition matches and games. So before going into the very strong tournament of St. Petersburg of 1914, he actually played one exhibition match with Ossi Bernstein, the guy that was very vocal about it, uh, not welcoming Capablanca at San Sebastian tournament that we already covered. So I guess we could say this is some kind of a rematch. They play two games and this is one of them. So let's see what happened. So Capablanca is black, uh, Bernstein is white and he starts with d4. And we see the pretty standard Capablanca Queen's Gambit decline setup with after knight to c3, knight to f6, uh, knight to f3, uh, we see bishop to e7, bishop to g5, and now castles. So usually what Capablanca we saw in that um, match against um, um, Frank Marshall, he used to play knight to e4. So that was a so called uh, Alaska variation where he allowed knight captures and pawn captures on e4 in the center. But here, he continues with castle, so a more cautious approach and definitely a better variation. It is, after all, a main line. We see e3 now and uh, knight from b to d7, so normal development. Uh, after this, we see rook to c1 and b6. So, clear uh, idea for uh, here for Capablanca is to develop this bishop on b7 because he doesn't imagine that he will be developing it on this di diagonal anytime soon. And in order to counter that, uh, Bernstein captures on d5, pawn captures on d5, and now after bishop comes on b7, he will be blocked by his own pawn on d5. We see queen to a, a4 now and bishop to b7. Queen to a4 was played with a simple idea, that he wants to play bishop to a6 in the end. So get rid of white, uh, black's this light square bishop. Which is, I guess, in and, in and of itself an okay idea, but usually I see nowadays especially people develop this bishop on e2 and d3, so which is much more normal. But okay, this is also an okay idea, Capablanca doesn't mind, he exchanges the bishop. Bishop to a6 and queen to a6, and now c5. So he continues with the strike in the center. And now for some reason, even though there is no hurry and uh, white is perfectly fine in this position, some would argue even better. Uh, white can go castles, put the rook on the d-file, and he has continued. His, uh, he has uh, finished his development, and in a sense, he ju just then needs to find a plan depending on what black does and uh, go for winning chances. But for some reason here, uh, Bernstein captures on f6, and knight captures on f6. So he essentially simplified for the position and uh, gave Capablanca a breathing space. Uh, he also captured on d5, so pawn captures on d5, also wouldn't go for that option. Okay, in the end it leads uh, black with um, sort of a three uh, pawn islands and um, I would say a bit uh, less positional, uh, so a bit more positional advantage here for white, but uh, nothing, nothing conclusive definitely. Here we see castle by Bernstein and after that queen to b6. Uh, Capablanca would enjoy queen captures on b6 to open up the a file for the rook and then to have two pawn islands as white has them. But okay, queen to e2, uh, Bernstein is, isn't interested, he wants to defend the pawn and move the queen out of the way. And now c4, a move that will definitely uh, start some conversations in that age uh, because essentially people thought that it was a weak move made by Capablanca but essentially it is a very good positional move. Uh, at first glance, it does leave this d4 square wide open for the knight to jump in, and then after that, knight can jump to f5 or b5, depending on the preference and the position. So it does seem like uh, giving some edge for white, but uh, c4 comes with a clear idea. First, you want to open up this diagonal for the bishop. Second, you are planning to put your rooks on the b and c file to attack on the queen side. The pressure on the b5, b2 pawn will be great, and this is something that Capablanca is going for. Uh, at least he has the first one with a plan. So we see rook from f to d1 and rook from f to d8. So pressure on the d5 pawn and Capablanca is defending. And now a normal question would be what happens if uh, white wants to start breaking off black center. d5 pawn is kind of weak and will be weak for the rest of the game, but can you take advantage of his weakness right away? Can you play e4? 
So if a pawn captures on e4, then you would have a series of exchanges on e4, sorry, knight captures, queen captures, now the bishop is attacked, so bishop to f6, double attack on the b2 pawn, queen can capture and queen can capture on b2. In the end, objectively, objectively looking, it is a drawn game, everything is equal, pretty much. Uh, I would say slight edge for black because he, in the open game he has the bishop against the knight, which is fine. But in the end, um, essentially one of the sides need to make a mistake in order to the other side to get some a serious advantage. So it would be a draw. Other thing that you can play maybe is d4, but uh, knight to d5 is an okay move because now you have to capture because the queen and the bishop are attacked. Knight captures, pawn captures, the bishop is attacked, bishop to f6, and after queen to c4 and uh, queen to b7, so adding an attacker to d5, you can capture, and uh, after a series of exchanges, once again, knight to b3, rook captures, rook captures, and bishop captures on b2, and again, uh, this is even more of a draw. So, uh, these are the possibilities. So, if Bernstein wanted to go for a draw, e4 is definitely a move to do it in this position, but he wanted to take advantage of this d4 square. So, he played knight to d4. And after this, we have bishop to b4. An absolute great move. So, at some point, you want to go and capture on c3 when the time is right, when you put your pieces where they should be, and continue with the attack on the queen side. And now b3. A weakening of the position and allowing a lot of now all, all of a sudden a shift in plans for Capablanca. He plays a rook from a to c8 because plan is to capture now and go for the c3 knight. But Bernstein captures first and Capablanca captures with a pawn, which is a good move because essentially you get a pass pawn, a pawn that cannot be captured right away. Rook to c2 and now bishop to c3. Rook to c3 and now Capablanca. Uh, shows the move why he actually played bishop captures on c3 knight to d5 so a very good tactical move so a tactician's mind in uh, in the making uh, running uh, because essentially what happens here uh, why white in the end cannot capture on c4 so the reason is pretty simple after rook captures on c4 knight to c3 and this knight is actually defended by this rook uh, so he is allowed to jump on c3 in order to give a fork for the queen and the rook. There is no time to capture on c8 because knight to e2 comes with a check. So this is uh, why that is not possible. So essentially you have to give up a rook here. Uh, so the exchange for the pawn. This is not good. So you have to move the rook. Rook to c2. And we see c3 immediately. So you just continue with your plan. Uh, you have the pass pawn and pass pawns are meant to be pushed. Uh, rooks double up on the c file so that knight to b4 isn't possible and now Capablanca also needs to double up the rooks in order to yeah, continue the pressure on the c file and then maybe get some chances but once again with having these two rooks here the knight and the queen close black cannot hope he has a pass pawn but he cannot hope for much uh, here but uh, let's see what happened in the game rook to c5 and knight to b3 so attacking the rook rook has to move uh, essentially, Kabulanka wants to stay on the c-file to put the other rook on c8. Rook to c6, and now knight back on d4. Rook to c7. So, Kabulanka is kind of looking for the best square for the rook in order to double up. And here in this position, uh, everything is looking good. h3 seems like a reasonable move. You want to avoid back rank, back rank threats. Uh, but uh, Bernstein is uh, dead set on, on uh, attacking that rook, so he continues with knight to b5. But now rook to c5 comes with an additional attack on the knight. So knight would have to come back to d4. But Bernstein has a different idea in this position and uh, as it happens a totally wrong idea. He plays knight to c3. And um, this is actually a very good uh, situation uh, and a very good position for all of you if you want to pause the video and try to solve it. It's a very nice tactic. Uh, what black needs to play in this situation in order to win the game? How? What is the best continuation? So if you want, definitely pause the video and look into it. It's not that hard. You just have to think about the position where the white put himself. So currently he is the one uh, which uh, picked up the pawn. But in the end, what will be the biggest threat? Uh, Capablanca continued with knight to c3. Rook captures, rook captures, and rook captures. And now this is the critical position. 
Now here Capablanca makes the uh, yeah the finishing move. In a sense, when the rook moved from the the first rank, uh, back rank ideas are now uh, a serious threat. Um, at the moment, queen to be one. Uh, queen to b1 immediately doesn't work because of queen to f1 just blocks. You can pick up the a2 pawn, you will have the best a pawn, but in the end uh, you will have uh, you will have to make a lot of moves in order to win this end game. So a rook and a queen against a rook and a queen is definitely one that will uh, last uh, over 60 moves. So you don't want to go about that. Uh, on the other hand, once again, the first rank is here for the taking, and what is the best move actually here, what Capablanca actually played in the game, queen to b2. And why is that? Because essentially you are attacking these two pieces. And uh, if queen captures on b2, then a simple rook to d1 is checkmate. So that is one thing. So you cannot capture. But can you maybe uh, defend the rook? If you play queen to e1, for example, or queen to c4, the idea is the same. Queen captures on c3. And now uh, you lost the rook, and uh, if you capture the queen, rook to d1, queen to e1, and rook to e1 is checkmate. So, as it seems, after queen to b2, uh, you cannot defend the rook. The only thing that you can do is uh, defend the queen with king to f1, or just move the queen. Or, yeah, yeah, that is, that is the only thing you can do. Defend the, uh, the queen with king to f1 or just move the queen. So essentially in this position Bernstein after realizing that resigned the game and Capablanca uh, gave us this uh, beauty of a tactic uh, puzzle uh, for uh, for this video and in general. So yeah, uh, this is pretty much it for this video. Um, uh, to continue with the Capablanca series later on I will uh, just uh, go over the the very strong St. Petersburg tournament of 1914, uh, 1914, so stay tuned for that if you're interested, and yeah, that's pretty much it. That being said, I would like to thank you for watching this video, and I will see you next time.